Hello, everyone. This is Arlene Stridler Brown joining you from a snowy day in Boulder, Colorado, even though it is April. Today's topic is strategies for collecting data during a home visit, a virtual home visit in our case. But first, a tip for the day. This uh, came from one of the uh, participants in an ASHA webinar last year, and it's about tele-intervention. And this participant said, quote, I have never considered providing early intervention services via telepractice. However, I can see some benefits. I can also see how telepractice might increase the family's engagement, at least during the session, unquote. Family engagement in assessment is also a great potential when we're working remotely. First, what are the purposes of assessment? Well, we do formal assessment, we do informal assessment. We do formal assessments for reasons like determining eligibility for Part C services, unless the child's hearing loss makes them categorically eligible. And we also use formal assessment to develop our individual family service plan. But we use informal assessments, assessment data that's included in each uh, session. We collect this data after a strategy is taught, as we watch the child playing with the parent, and we also collect this information at the end of a session. First, I'll talk about formal assessments, give you some ideas, and then we'll talk about informal assessments. For formal assessments, many assessments are completed by parents. We have interviews that are created specifically for parents to complete with their interventionist, something easily done via tele-intervention. And we have parent completed protocols that can just be done on their own at home, and then they can deliver the information to you. We have uh, three that look at development in different domains. One is the play assessment questionnaire. And that is an assessment that is done as an interview and it looks at a child's cognitive skills. We have two uh, multifaceted checklists, all for parent report. Uh, one is the Kent Inventory of Developmental Skills for young children under the age of 12 months. And we have the Minnesota Child Development Inventory that's been around for a long time and has been used by programs in many states both the Kent Inventory of Developmental Skills, also known as the KIDS, and the Minnesota cover several developmental domains. If we want to look more specifically at vocabulary, another formal assessment that gives you age equivalence is the MacArthur Communicative Development Inventory. And there are two protocols there, uh, depending on the age of the child and the size of their vocabulary. But let's look at other what I call formal assessments that are conducted through video capture. All you need to do is record your session, review that session, and you can get a language sample of the child. You can get a speech or phonology sample of what the child is saying. If it's a language sample, it can be based on what the child's saying or signing. And we have age equivalents for that type of information. We can also collect a language sample of the parent something to consider because this is parent-centered early intervention. We want to see what it is the parents are saying to their children uh, so that we can look at the parents' vocabulary and the parents' syntax. I will uh, make available some of these protocols so that you can see them in the um, course. Uh, for informal assessments, let's go back to the slide that looks at the five parts of a home visit, and look specifically at that fourth part, assess and evaluate. And also look at the slide from the first uh, recording that was about showing the craft. You pick a strategy, you discuss it, you interact with the child or model the behavior, the strategy with the child, and then you evaluate with the parent what was the child's behavior while you were using the strategy? 
Maybe it was an expansion technique. The child's at the one word level. You're trying to encourage them to speak two words. We're talking maybe about a 20, 22 month old child. Let's evaluate if your strategy worked. Did the child try to say more than single words? And then the parent plays with the child and then you evaluate again. This too is a way to collect data about the child and the parent. Remember when you're interacting with the parent that we can use some of the wonderful strategies identified by Rush and Sheldon in their coaching work. You're going to observe what's happening. You're going to ask questions of the parent and you're going to brainstorm with the parent as you collect information about the child's behavior or about the parent's comfort with a strategy. This is all valuable data because we want to know about child development and we want to know about parent comfort with the strategies that we're teaching them. Your assessment will guide your next steps. It will help you to identify the homework that you might leave with the family, the challenges for the week, and it might help you uh, identify some of the, set, the topics for your next session that you will go back and discuss with the family and have the family work with you to prioritize. Before I wrap up, I want to give you two examples. One is collecting data on a 15-month-old child, and the target is semantic development. So the parent has completed the MacArthur Words and Gestures Inventory, and we see that the child has many nouns. What comes next? More nouns in many different categories. This is a time when you can teach to the test. Look at exactly what's on the MacArthur, see what the child understands and says, and start teaching whatever it is that the child isn't yet understanding or saying. Maybe you want to look at names of food, maybe it's pieces of clothing, maybe body parts. Fill in what the child is not yet doing. Let's look at a very little child. Let's look at the cognitive skills of let's say a four month old. And we've administered, parents completed, the Kent Inventory of Developmental Skills, the kids. And on a cognitive level, the parent has observed that the child moves uh, cloth that's over the face and uh, smiles at their own image in a mirror. Teach to the test, what comes next? You've collected some good data developmentally. What comes next is the child touches moving objects. The child reaches for objects that are out of reach. The child moves to get an object that's out of reach. This is all listed in the uh, test booklet in terms of the hierarchy of skills in each domain. This was simply the cognitive domain. You've collected data, you see what the child can do, you proceed to work on the next level of skills. Have a look at the PowerPoint and the materials, and I'll look forward to addressing any questions that you may have. Bye for now.